Hello and welcome to the Lynx Cup Pairs from the Highlands of Scotland. Three day event. And well, golf doesn't get any better than the Highlands of Scotland in our opinion. Although it can be a little bit chilly, especially at this time of year. But uh, well, Laris Arneson, he's come all the way over from Iceland. He knows about cold weather and he knows how to warm up. Boy, does he know how to warm up. He's been there for 10, 15 minutes already. Unlike Jill Kimber and Adrienne Wood, who just uh, warm up the one arm, that's enough for them. Although Adrienne telling Jill about her wrestling career, yes, she used to be very good at wrestling. Couple of half Nelsons there. Uh, well, Laris still going. We're now at the 22 minute mark, and he's still on the bottom half of his body. Hasn't even made it to the upper part yet. Uh, oh dear, well, could be there for some time. I hope that fence is well made. Well, of course, these uh, courses running alongside beautiful beaches here on the northeast of Scotland. And, well, some of the staff, the starters, keeping an eye on things, making sure that things are moving along, moving along down the beach. Well, isn't it amazing how the locals get used to the temperatures here? Well, I've got a jacket on, so does this lady, but, uh, well, the locals on the beach. Uh, well, good news. 25 minutes in and Laris has moved to the upper part of his body and well that's an Icelandic warm up this a good old fashioned British warm up Mick Kirby cigarette ready to go lovely stuff now down on to the first tee opening drive of the week here at Brora for Andrew Robinson well he's a powerful kind of player it's a short par 4 and he is going for the green and the right hand side of that picture you can see the ball and he's on the green he's made the green unfortunately that's the 17th green <laughs> yes first green away off to the right take a look at the stroke saver next time Andrew now Goldsby Rex Tattersall in the water determined to play it as it lies and uh, well <laughs> this could be messy <laughs> And was it worth it? Well, here in the par three, uh, well, he's not on the green, so... Well, it's a tricky green to hit, that's for sure, especially from the water. But he's out with uh, Malcolm Hansen. Now you can see Malcolm, well, he's just went straight on to the 11th tee. Uh, he's still actually playing the 10th. Uh, going, I can't see too much between him and the green, though. Uh, just the one, two, three, four, five, six trees playing left-handed today to give the others a chance but I tell you what he's got all the moves he's got all the shots watch this ladies and gentlemen what a fantastic shot beautiful well he's got that for his par Rex Tattersall well I guess he's got this for his par that would be spectacular out the water and two to here for a par well I think he'll just have to settle for the bogey but, uh, well, at least we were there to see the action. And there's only one camera out here, so sometimes it can be tough to catch all the action or to make a decision uh, on who to film. So here we are at Brora at the 5th, and we've decided to film Tracy Royal. Most of this group have missed the green. Have we made the right decision? Is it the best shot? Uh, I think we had the cameras on the wrong golfer there, just for that shot. Uh, not quite so close as her playing partners there, Tracy. Now, back to the 10th, and here we have Tony, Tony Vichichak, and well, a little way from his playing partners off to the right there, Tony, well, he doesn't come alone to these tournaments, and uh, yes, everywhere he goes, he has a ball spotting team, even if he's only going to duff his tee shot 50 yards into the heather. They are there and ready to find that ball, although they're not doing too well, I would say. Uh, I don't know if it went as far as that. Now back to Broda, the first, Jill Kimber. In the middle of the fairway. This is the start to her week. And, well, despite receiving plenty of instructions from Steve Kimber, that's a wonderful shot. She's kept things together and every chance of an opening birdie. Uh, oh dear, well not the same can be said for Dave Bamford, he is in a bunker and fair to say that's a bit of an awkward lie I would think, 
Uh, Dave's pre-shot routine going on almost as long as Laris's warm-up. Oh dear. Well, we need to cut away to Steve Kimber. Now, Steve, ball sitting up nicely. Nothing to put him off. Ready to go any time. Well, except that Jill played a great shot. Yes, she did. Oh, and he's worried about trying to get closer than Jill. There's a lot of bragging rights going on in this couple. And I'm not too... Well, we can go back to Dave. I'm hearing that Dave is just about ready to play. Just to get out of this bunker. That left foot getting lower and lower. Oh, dear. Didn't quite make it. Yes, he rushed it. That was a problem. He should have taken his time, just like Steve. Steve certainly will not be rushed. Oh, but he's off. He's gone. He's hit the ball. Was it worth the wait? Oh, it certainly was. What a fantastic shot. Great stuff there from Steve. Unfortunately, though, the referee's rules have been out and he's already got a two-stroke penalty for slow play and he's only halfway down the first. Now, out to the sixth, the par three, and it's all about local knowledge. Yes, Jackie Wade there with the kind of pitch and run with a driver and very nearly hitting the flag. Well, it's run on a touch, but that is a great tee shot there from Jackie. And, uh, well, Liz Robinson, she's on the 13th, and that's quite close, actually, to the 6th. And she saw Jackie's tee shot, and she thought, well, I'll have a bit of that. Let's land it short and low and run it onto the green. Unfortunately, uh, Liz's local knowledge not quite so good. Yes, there is a water trap down there. And, oh dear, well, it'll be a good par from there. Now, well, what all golfers look for in their game is consistency. Now, on the left, we have Daniel Wise. On the right, we have Daniel Wise. Now, why are we seeing two tee shots exactly the same? That's just to show you Daniel's consistency. Both times, miles off to the right. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> good par from there. But at least he's consistent. Absolutely consistent. Big, huge slice every time. I would aim left if I was you, Daniel. Now, Ian Thorpe has missed the green on the 10th at Golspie. But no problem to a man like that. Beautiful little chip down with his second. Yes, I can tell you, he got his four. Now, out to the sixth on Brora. Uh, back with Andrew Robinson. Now, he's not got much room between that bunker and the flag. If he's going to float it over... He'll be doing well to stop the ball if he gets it over the bunker to stop it short of the flag. Doesn't want to run past the flag. Wants a little bit of backspin if he can. Oh, he's flopped up beautifully. And just watch the backspin kick in. Andrew very sensibly not walking after that ball because it's coming right back to him. Uh, yes, and not really any closer to the, hole, to the hole, but at least he missed the bunker, as did this man. Jurek Brown, well, he missed two bunkers. Amazing with that approach shot. He didn't hit the green, but didn't hit either bunker. I think he was playing for the bunkers. I think he was disappointed he didn't find the bunker. Because <laughs> there's no other explanation for that shot. Uh, uh, now, Jurek is in the bunker. Well, we can move away to the third. And one man who doesn't mind getting in the bunker. Dave Rigby out every time. Absolutely no control over the distance, but he gets it out first time, every time. Yes, the Dave Rigby route. Now we can go out to the 13th, and we have Jeremy Whitehouse. Now we saw Liz Robinson with her tee shot here, showing a lack of local knowledge. But Jeremy Whitehouse is a man full of local knowledge. He studies all the undulations. And he knows if he misses the green by five yards to the left, he's still got a good birdie opportunity. Nicely done. Jeremy, he's playing out with uh, Mary Annabelle. And Mary deciding not to take the Jeremy route. Just uh, rather, oh, well, straight down the middle for Mary. And in fact, well, we're going to stay here because, well, when we see good golf, it's nice to share it. Mary Annabelle stepping up with her birdie putt and in. Great stuff there. Well played, Mary. Now, out to the third at Gulls Bay and we have Mark Stewart. Now, Mark always holds from this distance. And, oh, but not today. 
Oh, he's come up short. Oh, and you can see the disappointment on his face. Well, that's never happened to him before. Doesn't quite know what to do. He is absolutely devastated. Yes, well, he's come all the way from the Earl of Mar. Beautiful course. At, well, he's thinking that would have went in if I was home. And, oh, dear. And he, he's not happy at all. Well, you can't hold them all. Well, he's just a little bit short. One man who's never short, John Wade. Big John Wade out with a very lofted club. But just deciding to use the bottom of it to thin it right past the flag, right past the green. Uh, well, that going like a train, it has to be said. Yes, and well, perhaps he was inspired because running alongside the golf course here is the train. In fact, he's just got trains on the mind. Through like a train, the train runs past and the putt back, well... Yes, that sound coming from John's ball. And he's pretty much back where he started from. Uh, well, hopefully his playing partners will see him through it. Uh, speaking of which, Mark Stewart is looking for some uh, support after missing that putt from his playing partner, Richard Sloss. Come on, Richard, a couple of words of encouragement. Just... just well, no, they're both disappointed. <laughs> oh, dear. I think we should move away, yes, to the ninth at Brora. Par 3, and, well, Rab Jackson on the tee. Uh, he's landed it short, and on it rolls, and on it rolls. And I can tell you, look at that, we saw some spectacular stuff here at the ninth. It has to be said on day one, that was Rab Jackson. He was out with Laris. Now, remember Laris's warm-up routine. Does it pay dividends? That is the question. 48-minute warm-up routine. And there are the results for everyone to see. Laris Arneson, a magnificent tee shot. Of course, it wasn't the only warm-up that we saw. We saw Mick Kirby's uh, full cigarette warm-up. And, uh, well, Lar Laris, 48 minutes of commitment towards getting shots like that. Mick Kirby, one cigarette. And pretty much exactly the same result. And uh, well done, yes. Well, it just shows you there's more than one way to get the best out of your game. Good celebrations there, I hope. And uh, speaking of which, Thorsten Thorstenson. So good they named him twice. Now, he's got this putt here on the part three. Sixth and it is in. And a little fist pump there, yes. Nice celebration. Great putt. Well played. Uh, Pete Thompson. Here at the 5th at Goldsby. And a similar length of putt. And that is in. And yes, another fist pump. Another great celebration. That's what we like to see. Now, a little bit of a shorter putt. But John O'Neill. And that is in. And that's another. Well, are we going to get a celebration this time? Yes, from John and from playing partner Gary. That's <laughs> magnificent. All those putts were for sevens. Great celebrations. But here we have a putt for a birdie. It's Paul Atkinson, and it's way wide, but it's coming round, it's coming round, it's coming. If this goes in, just watch the celebrations. Uh, no, well, he's just playing it down. Well, I guess it's not as if he came from a tricky lie in the rough or anything. Oh, speaking of which, Daniel Wise, tricky lie in the rough. Uh, that lie is getting slightly better all the time. You can see he ran out of his own golf balls and had to start borrowing from the range. Uh, well, that lie is getting better and better. Well, Daniel knows how to... Yes, well, it's preferred lies on the fairway. I'm not too sure if this... Well, there's been a lot of rule changes in golf this year. I'm not too sure if this is one of them. Uh, but, you, well, you got to watch if the ball is sitting up that nicely now, Daniel. Um, you could get a good, clean hit onto that. Nothing between the club face and the ball. Well, he came up short in the par 3 sixth here on Broda. What can he do with a nice teed up lie? Daniel Wise. <laughs> what he can do is absolutely murder it 100 yards away past over the green. And um, well, the camera's not quite catching it, so we're just going to show you exactly where that ball ended up. And as Daniel Wise takes to <laughs> the marathon that is collecting his ball, it's time to say goodbye from the Lynx Cup pairs from the Highlands of Scotland. <laughs>